My name is Gilbert. Today, I will be introducing you to the model open window or air vent. The airflow can cause changes in temperature, which will lead to inconsistent prints. Avoid direct sunlight, as it may cause odd issues with the final product. If the air is too cold, it also may cause more problems, as layers will cool at different rates. The more control you will have over your environment, the more consistency you will see in your prints. With the printer set up, let's make sure the bed is calibrated. The printer does go through some initial setup before it's packaged and shipped, but unfortunately, a lot can happen during that time, so it's always best to double check the calibration. Turn on the printer. Using the control wheel, navigate to Move, then select Home Axis. This will tell the extruder to make its way to the front left corner of the build area. Once the unit has reached the home position, go ahead and power off the printer to release the motors and allow movement. At this point, take a piece of paper and slide it in between the nozzle and the build plate. The goal is to feel just a bit of tension on the paper. If you do not feel any tension, then you will need to adjust the height of the plate using the screws in the corners of the build area. Move the extruder to all four corners as well as the middle of the build plate to make sure the nozzle is calibrated in any spot. After calibrating those five areas, please check five more random positions on the build plate to ensure the bed is properly calibrated in any area. It should be noted that after a few prints, things may get shifted about. Please remember to recalibrate your printer often to ensure consistent printing every time you use it. Once the bed is nice and level, we can start loading in your filament of choice. We include a small amount of filament that you can use to get familiar with the printer. It should be noted that this amount is not enough to finish a full print. It's only for you to get familiar with the beginning process and run some tests. With that said, let's run through the steps to get your filament going. Place your choice of filament on the filament rack. Using a pair of scissors, cut a diagonal edge on the end of your filament. Press down the tension tab on the extruder motor and pass the filament through the assembly into the Bowden connector until it enters the filament guide tube. Continue to use your fingers to push the filament until you feel the filament stop. Now power on your printer. Navigate to the temperature section on the menu, then select extruder. Set the extruder to the temperature required for the filament you will be using. It will begin to preheat. Once it reaches the set temperature, exit the preheat menu and navigate to move. Select Z-axis and rotate the control wheel counterclockwise to raise the extruder off the build platform and allow visibility. Now, navigate through the move options and select extruder. Turn the control wheel counterclockwise to feed the filament into the extruder. Continue this until the filament begins to come out of the nozzle. When the printer is all warmed up, you can go through and select Print File to get started. When printing from an SD card, move the control wheel over Print. Click the control wheel to view all the files on the SD card. After you select your file, it will display the print settings, like bed and extruder temperature. From here, your printer will start working. You can sit back and watch the magic happen. Once the printing process starts, we recommend standing by and monitoring the printer to ensure nothing unexpected happens. If you need to step away, it would be best to stop your print. While on the print screen, you can move the control wheel to highlight and select Cancel. With the sample print complete, congrats! You're now ready to start your own prints. I so I know that video kind of goes by really quickly. Um, he tells you how to turn it on, how to start the print, um, he tells you the basic functions of the actual computer program. But don't worry, everyone's going to get a chance to learn 
how to do this in a small group or individually. Um, and the hope is that after we start teaching a few students here in your classroom, that you can actually help teach each other. Um, when we do prints, we will have it over there in that corner. And once everyone has a chance to learn how the program works, we can kind of have that printer going all the time and kind of having a couple students go in and check in on it. And if it does fail or if something does happen, each student should know at that point how to stop it and how to control the printer. So that kind of brings us to the point of like, what can we make? What, what can we make with a 3D printer? Um, I have two samples that I've brought in, things that we've made on 3D printers already. So go ahead and take one of these, pass it around, and kind of get a look at it. Um, one is a dog, one is a cat. Check it out. And surprisingly, they're actually really strong. Go ahead, try to, try to squeeze it. You would think this is all hollow right now. So as, as that gets passed around, that's the quality of things that we can make here on the printer. Um, in the past, people have made prosthetic arms, prosthetic limbs from 3D printers. A lot of medical devices use really nice 3D printers. Um, there's tools inside of different garages and different shops that use 3D printers to make specific tools. Just this weekend, I made a piece for my washing machine that had broken, and it's a little plastic piece that locks the lid in place, and I printed out one of those to fix my washing machine. Um, so in the class, we're going to start off with a class project. Each of you are going to be printing a small piece to a bigger project. Once we're done, we're going to put all of those pieces together and see what you've made. After that, um, with Mr. Marr and I, we're kind of talking about what can we make, and we're thinking about maybe some trophies for the school, some trophies that go to the awards or ceremonies. Um, and then, really, it's up to your imagination. Whatever you can think of, we can pretty much make here on the computer. Next one. So that brings us to how do we get started? So the CAD program that I was talking about, the computer assisted drafting, we're going to be using a program called Tinkercad. Now, what this does, it's a shape manipulation device. So you'll have a lot of different shapes that you can choose from on the side. You can add shapes to it. You can change their sizes. You can delete parts of different shapes to really make whatever you want. So this is an example of someone making a case for their phone. They made a filament case um, as a phone protector, which I thought was pretty neat. And if you look closely, again, here you're going to see your x, y coordinate plane, and your z coordinate plane goes up and down. So here's your x, y on the ground, and your z is how high the object is. Um, that being said, I'm talking, I've been emailing with Tinkercad, and because your class has a set of Chromebooks, they think that they can give us a class code so that we can have Tinkercad on all of your actual Chromebooks. So that way, if you were to have free time in your class, um, or workshop time, or maybe if you want to come in and spend time during your recess in either my classroom or Mr. Mars, if he's available, you can come in and you can start making and designing your projects. All right. I think that's it. Um, that being said, I think if we have some time, I can take a few students over to my class and we can start getting ready with that Tinkercad. Give me your wrap-up comment and we'll end it just, you know, in a nutshell. What's, what's our goal? Um, so our goal this year is to basically have all of the students here in this classroom be comfortable with Tinkercad, take a object or an image from Tinkercad into a slicing software, and then take it from that software, have the students load it into the printer, and actually print their objects. I think that's, that's our main goal. And then spread it to all fifth grade. And then spread it to all fifth grade after that. Yes. Okay, save. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. Let's <laughs> go.